All right, guys. Well, I've been out to get a, a evening meal on the weekend. I do that pretty often. And uh, I'm in the old old. I got the headlights put in. You saw another video of that going on. I did get those put in okay. I had to end up taking the other headlight bucket out, just like I did that side over there. And I still have some aiming to do on them, but I'll get to that pretty soon. And uh, so anyway, um, I was going to just put the camera up on the dashboard and just do my drive back to the house there. Do you guys like these driving videos? Uh, I like making them if, if anybody likes to watch them. I don't know how interesting they are, but we'll, I'll do one again. Uh, I was told you I was going to talk to you and tell you about what was missing there. Uh, I've been driving this car. This has been my only car recently. I sold that Honda. And before I know, I know, before you guys, I say, hey, you sell everything. Well, that that one was not planned. That that, that went kind of downhill pretty quick. Um, you know, I went through all those videos, and I was telling you guys my personal suggestions about buying a good used car. And I thought I was taking my own advice some good advice and as it turned out uh, I didn't um, that car in 5,000 miles I put four quarts of oil in it and uh, it had a couple <clears throat> other issues going on that quickly made me decide that it needed to find a new home it had a lot of uh, engine noise had some piston noise and the throttle bearing was making noise, and it was starting to make a worse noise, kind of a shriek when you let the clutch out. So, yeah, suffice to say, it, it's not here now for good reason. So, I'm going to amend that video and kind of warn people not to. I, I don't think I would buy one of those Hondas. I didn't care for it, and I think you might be into some problems with that. So, let's get on the road and get going, shall we? I was gonna tell you guys, you younger folks, you know, these cars used to be back in the day, these are very popular cars, these cutlass, cutlass sedans and coupes. Through the 80s, they were some of the best selling cars GM had back then. They used to be everywhere, man. Everybody and their brother had a cutlass. You know, people buy these cars. Anytime I've talked to people about this car, you know, just telling them about it. You know, just out of curiosity, ask me what it is. And tell them it's got a V6 in it. Everybody's kind of, you see their, their face drop a little bit. I kind of like it with the V6. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but, you know, with it off stock, these things are utterly reliable. I think you get away from that when you start tearing the engines out, and swapping things around, cutting the wiring and stuff like that. You, just, you get a car that, you know, so far runs excellent. And everything works on it, and then you, you kind of you kind of reduce that back to not so good. So you know, and everybody does what they want to do with the car. I wouldn't discourage anybody from it. I bought this car from, you know, he didn't even drive it for two years. I asked him if it ran, and he said, he said, well, yeah, I had it running when I first bought it. He said, but it didn't run very well. He said, I was just going to pull the engine out of it and put, put a 350 in it, which I, I do have to commend him. He was going to put an old 350 in it, so that's good. But, <coughs> shoot, I just did a little bit of work on it, so far it's been really great. But each day is on. So, 
car is going to need some tires in the worst way. Somebody's done that. They've done kind of a rat rod thing. They put pretty close to the right size tires on the rear of it, and then they put smaller, like lower profile tires on the front of it. Something like this with the same wheels front and back, I hate that. actually makes reproductions for those. I couldn't believe that. Usually four-door stuff. Usually old cars like this, you're down to making it on your own. You have to have some. They say they have it. Guess what we're going to get more of tomorrow, I suppose. You guessed it. More snow. This has been a rough winter. About broke me on winter. Which I don't mind snow. But, you know, I'm on vacation this week, so I don't have to go anywhere anyway. But, you know, as long as we get enough to actually make it worthwhile having it, you know, just a little bit. Down here in the south, I don't know about anywhere else, but down in the south, anytime we have a snow or an ice morning, the same thing happens. Even if it's just going to be a dusting, everybody flocks to the grocery store and gets milk and bread. You know, if I'm going to be stuck in the house for a few days, the last thing I want is milk and bread. I want pizza, hamburger, hot dogs, chocolate cake, chocolate chip cookies, Pasta, macaroni and cheese. You know this milk and this milk and bread bull crap. That's just monkey see, monkey do stuff. As people have learned that from you know the simplest animals learn things from watching others, and that's what people do. They, oh, I don't know what I'll do with milk and bread, but I got to go to the store and get milk and bread. It's gonna snow. We got milk and bread. And then to get back to the car and get back to the house, I said, well, I'm doing good now. I bought milk and bread. The grocery store is a half mile from my house. It's not like I can't get there. I could walk there if I had to. See, I don't think stuff like that happens up north. I think up north where it snows a lot, people just conduct their usual routines. You know? they don't, I'll get two gallons of milk and two loaves of bread. There's an inch of snow on the ground, and all I care about is having milk and bread. But, you know, people do a lot of dumb stuff. They do a lot of dumb stuff, but it's just, like I said, it's monkey see, monkey do stuff. They see other people do it. Don't take offense if I haven't been making many comments lately.
Smith last week, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this again. Uh, I think I mentioned it before. Somebody would ask me about this car and what it is. It's an 83 Olds Cutlass Cruiser. And it's got a 231 V6 engine with a turbo. Uh, yeah, one of those lights is still out. That's what I'm that. With a turbo uh, hydromatic 250 transmission in it. And while we're talking about that, I'm going to clear up a little bit some of that about transmissions, those transmissions. Most of these cars came with a turbo 200 in them, and that's the ones that everybody called the metric because it's stamped on the bottom of the pan. And that is not the same thing as a turbo 250. A turbo 250 is basically just a turbo 350 that has a band applied second gear instead of a uh, clutches, like a clutch pack there for it. So that's what that is. That's the difference. If you look at a turbo 250 and a turbo 350, you can really can't tell the difference in them. They both have a they both have a uh, modulator valve on them and a vacuum line leading to the modulator valve. But the only difference is that the turbo 250 has a band adjusting screw where the turbo 350 does not. Now a turbo 200, the metric, you can always tell that one because it has no vacuum modulator. All it has is a downshift cable. Well, it's not a downshift cable, it's a, it's a throttle valve cable, they call it. So a turbo 250 and a turbo 350 are almost exactly the same thing, nearly. A turbo 200 and a turbo, well, I'll have to call it what, the 200R4, 204R, I think it is. Uh, they're almost the same transmission themselves and they're not they're not really related to each other that series so hope that clears that up guys well I'm back home so got the residents driving by giving me the eye there so I guess I'm gonna go in so do some videos thanks for watching guys have a good one